What's up, Speak For Yourself listeners? It's your boy, Shay Sharp, co-host of FS1's Undisputed. I wanted to tell you about my new podcast, Club Shay Shay, where we always do something before two something. Each week, I sit down with a guest for a drink and conversation, and as host and proprietor of Club Shay Shay, I welcome in esteemed guests such as Snoop Dogg, Floyd Money Mayweather, LeVar Ball, Isaiah Thomas, just to mention a few. Whether I'm talking to an athlete, a musician, an actor, or a lifelong friend, Club Shay Shay is a place where people share inspiring and motivational stories about their journeys to prominence. The new episode drops every Monday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe to Club Shay Shay now and make sure you never miss a new episode. Now, back to Speak for Yourself. Welcome to Speak for Yourself, Marcel Swally, alongside Emmanuel Mocha. I like all that. You like, I like all, this? all that? I hate all this. I mean, I don't know what to do. I you would have never picked this. You look royal. Like I you look royal. Have a royal show. You look dusty. What you going on? <laughs> What's the brown about? What's the Oh, you wanted to go royal and regal up there. Uh-huh. That's on something. Oh, huh? Let's get it started in Seattle, where Russell Wilson is still a Seahawk. But other teams are trying to get him out of Seattle. Reports say the Bears made a, quote, very aggressive pursuit for the seven-time pro bowler. Dan Patrick says the Bears offered three first-round picks, a third-rounder, and two starters. Now we're hearing the Seahawks could have chosen from players including Khalil Mack Sheesh. and Akeem Hicks. Woo. Nice. But Pete Carroll nicks the trade. So, Acho Royalty, can Russell Wilson and the Seahawks still coexist? Big dog, they can coexist, but it won't be healthy. And that's the problem. Do you even want to coexist when it's not healthy? Uh, so I'm going to start the show with story time. Oh, oh really? We get there fast? Uh, we getting into story time real quick. <laughs> yeah. Because when you talk to me about coexistence, mm. it's not a matter of can two people exist under the same building? Can two people work together? But can they do it in a productive manner? So I have a mm. friend, true story. And my friend's parents have been married for 40 years, but haven't spoken in like 25. Stop that. True story. They live in the same house. Same house. Sleep in the same bed. All the same thing. Really? But do Relations still? Bruh, I don't don't know about that. Oh, come on, man. So are your parents still having relations? (laughs) That's that's, that's beyond the threshold of our friendship. Okay. But they would go to graduation parties for their kids, graduation for the kids, and standing on opposite sides of the pictures. Uh, my, my, My friend will have kids, and they'll visit at different times. They're coexisting. But it's not at all healthy. Mm. And I think that's where Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson, that's where Russell Wilson and the Seahawks, that's what this coexistence will look like. Like, can Russ still put on a Seahawks uniform? Would a name on the, uh, the, the the front of the jersey still say Seahawks? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will he keep their last name? Maybe. <laughs> but like so, I don't know that it will be a beneficial, I don't know that it will be a healthy relationship. Russell Wilson Mm. wants one thing. What? The Seattle Seahawks want another thing. And when you have differing opinions, differing desires, irreconcilable differences. Oh, we're going to divorce, huh? Mm. It's hard to coexist. Now, you cannot want to sign the papers because, as you talked about before, yeah. um, the, the, the bed, you, kids will make you stay. Oh, yeah. And, and, oh, yeah. And, when, and, that, when that marriage gets rough, look at them kids. Exactly. <laughs> and I still. think that mm-hmm. the relationship between the Seahawks and Russell Wilson has gotten rough. Mm. However, money might make them stay. Um, their previous winning ways might make them stay. But the fact of the matter is, if indeed they do coexist, okay. it will not be healthy at all. Oh, my goodness. I, I'm glad we're in story time because... Because uh, somebody got to come up here with the fun and entertainment. And somebody got to come up here with them straight facts. <laughs> and I'm coming with them facts. Oh, emotional, Russell, you are. Emotional, Russell. Yes, they can coexist. Let me start here with a fact. And you know this because this is a part of your DNA as well. The greatest attribute of all athletes is the ability to compartmentalize. True. Uh, I would really say, if you, you could add them all up, and we have tremendous attributes. The list in terms of quantity and quality is tremendous. However, I would always say the number one attribute of athletes is the ability to compartmentalize. How many times has it been game that your phone blown up? Mama said, I said three tickets. And then your daddy's over there and said, boy, what we gonna eat after the game? You're like, I ain't even went to work yet, daddy. Then your sister's like, my girlfriend, she kind of cute. She think you can... Hey, man. And you still... Gotta play the game. Gotta play the game. Gotta play the game. And then when you get to the stadium, you got fans, you got teammates, everybody's pulling in every different direction. But your ability to compartmentalize and to laser focus in on the moment moment is our greatest attribute. Oh, Russell has lost sight of that. He's lost perspective. You know why? 
Because Russell Wilson right now feels like a fraud. And this is what's going on. Oh, my therapist broke it down on me, so I'm gonna break it down on Russ. This is where Russell, <laughs> look at your face. Whoa, sorry. Uh, Sharon Osborne, anybody? Uh, <laughs> did I go there? Um, Russell Wilson feels like a fraud. Let me be real about this. Russell Wilson knows that he has never received the MVP vote. Correct. Last year, it became his campaign. I need to win and win all of it. Okay. Last year, he starts off fast, historically fast. 5-0 and start, he's balling out of control. But then once again, the doubt bird started to fly around because Russell Wilson did what he did before, which is falter in the second half of the season. What happened in that postseason game? Worst Russell Wilson game we've seen in many years, if not ever, in a postseason. 40% completion percentage. Threw a pick six. They lost, right? Russell Wilson has lost six of his last nine playoff appearances. Bruh. We've been in games before. When you're on a good team and you've been in those tight games, you're like, we got this. Mm -hmm. When you're a bad team and you're in those tight games, you're like, damn, here we go again. Russell Wilson felt the here we go again about Russell Wilson. What did he do after that? Instead of just going home, looking in the mirror, says, Sierra, move over. My turn. Let me stare at myself and get me right. He went to the Super Bowl to receive an award that's talking about character and commitment in the community. All those things. Caught envy. Looking at Patrick Mahomes out there. Looking at Tom Brady out there. And you know what happens? My therapist told me when you feel like a fraud, when you feel like yet you really are not living the reality you should live, you blame others. The first thing you do is start to say, uh, my office aligned. Say it. You start saying, I don't like Caro, My organization. I don't like this. The day. same people that made it so good for Russell Wilson that he became Russell Wilson. Now he's going to turn on those guys because he really doesn't want to answer the real question. Are you a fraud? Sell, I don't know if that's it. Here's what it Stop. is, big dog. Here's what it is. You know it's Russell it. Russell Wilson is looking at all these other guys like, wait, I can do what you're doing. And I can do what you and I can do what you're doing. Name them. Then how come y'all not letting me do it? Name them. I'll name them. The Bills, Josh Allen. Wait, do you what? pass the ball at a higher percentage than I'm allowed to pass the ball in Seattle. Wait, Tom Brady, I'm better than you at this stage in my career, but... Y'all pass the ball more often than I get to pass the ball. Patrick Mahomes, I might not be as good as you, but, I mean, I'm trying to be close, and y'all pass the ball at a higher rate than I pass the ball. I'm Ooh. looking around like, wait, you get to do that? You get to do that, Tom? You, you get to do that, Pat? You, you get to do that, Josh Allen? Envy. How I told you he's to do I, that. I told you it was envy. But it's not necessarily envy. Oh, it's stop. Un it's understanding this, Sal. I'm just as talented as them cats. Are you? But y'all letting me, y'all letting them ball, okay. and y'all not letting me ball. Sal, it's, it's kind of like, big dog, you remember, um, did y'all, you used to wear land sharks, them cleats. Remember the old school land sharks? Oh, I remember, I, I, tiger sharks, I think. Okay, okay. okay. The, the worst, like, the land shark show was the worst cleats, but they was the first cleats. Then mm. all of a sudden, everybody started coming out with some new cleats. Nike started coming out with some joints. Mm. Adidas started, even Under Armour with them click clack. We must protect this house. <laughs> they started coming out with some joints. E all of a sudden, Eric. you still wearing these land sharks, but your homeboys come out in the freshest cleats. If y'all didn't play sports, rock with me here. Okay. I come out every year. Boom, boom, mm, boom. Mm, mm. Russell Wilson is looking at Tom Brady got the iPhone X. Josh Allen got the X Plus. Uh, Man, Patrick Mahomes, you got the 12, uh, and I still got this cracked iPhone 6. Uh, Why is my offense <coughs> still old and everybody else in these past happy offenses putting up all these numbers and I'm still out here, Pete Carroll, you still trying to run the ball like this the 70s. Like this the <laughs> 80s. Be careful what we doing right now. You know Gail Sayers in the backfield. Oh, okay. Like we spreading it out right now. Ah. They get to spread it out. I don't. Irreconcilable differences. Man, you just gave everything I said, but you just gave it to me in little morsels, little bite-sized bits. You gave me the envy. Look at everybody. And then you... <laughs> boy, Russell Wilson, boy, if I see you in these streets, boy, we're going to have a conversation. And then you gave me the blame game. Oh, hey, Pete Carroll, why can't I get to throw the ball like everybody else? Because Pete Carroll said, bruh, you forgot I helped make you, homeboy. Who are you without the Legion of Boom? When he had the number one defense, number one defense, number one defense, number one defense, those were the years where we were talking about, look at Russell Wilson. Oh, he's a good quarterback that is continuing to grow. He got the equity, equity from Pete Carroll and the Legion of Boom. A Super Bowl win and another Super Bowl appearance. Then Pete Carroll's like, you know what, Russ? Maybe you are right. Let me let you cook. 
You have lost six of your last nine playoff hey, appearances. Hey, let fault. me let you cook. You ain't got an MVP vote yet. You keep talking about all these other dudes, dog. Not only did they get votes, they won the MVP. So you are not them. And if you think you are, you better make sure you remind yourself that I'm part of the reason you are that. Because if he doesn't have the Legion of Boom, he doesn't have that running game of Marshawn Lynch early. Be real. Okay. If we did a blind resume and looked at Phillip Rivers and we looked at Russell Wilson without the Legion of Boom and all that support, you'd be looking at the same dude damn near. But, so stop with this blame game, but, bro. Let me throw a butt in there. Let me throw a big butt Some in peaches. there. All the curves. <laughs> um, I'm going to say it like this, Sal. Remember, what? Tom Brady's only gone to the Super Bowl eight out of the nine Super Bowls, I believe, top ten defenses. You said it yeah, just yeah, two days yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. Tom That's Brady's facts. first Super Bowl, That's he facts. had 18 passing touchdowns, 12 <laughs> picks that year. Top flight defense. Second Super Bowl, top flight defense. All these great quarterbacks, they are in fact great, but their defenses are great along with them. The, the good quarterbacks are really, are really good, but their defenses undermine them. So I'm not going to be like, wait, <coughs> Russell Wilson, you ain't accomplished nothing without a good defense. Because we could all say, wait, Tom Brady, you ain't accomplished nothing uh -uh. without a good defense. Don't you change this. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Remember, <laughs> remember the Buccaneers defense you this year? You changing was this? What, number seven this year? It, 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 remember no, the no. Buccaneers defense was top flight. Wait a so minute. So all I'm going to say is this. If you are going to be like, hey, I made you. You ain't nothing without these good defenses. I would say nobody serves anything without these good defenses. But these good defenses mm. are nothing without me either. Oh, wait a minute. Like, I love how you move them goalposts. This is a conversation about can they coexist. Yes. You know why? Because Tom Brady with those great defenses – realized that he needed Belichick or at least they had a good enough relationship where he never blamed anybody. He never looked at his offensive line. He never looked at his defense. He just left. Hold on, hold on. He hold on. just left. 20 damn years? He left. He left because of the offense and he still didn't blame him. He still didn't pull his card. Hold on. And this is Tom Brady with six Super Bowls, been in nine, and he still didn't blame a damn soul. But he left. But hold on. You know why he left? Because they had those irrec irre was it? irreconcilable. Okay, but I ain't hard, never getting hard, divorced. Hard, hard, I don't want to say the word. Irreconcilable, yeah, yeah. irreconcilable yeah, yeah. differences. Right, right. That's it. He That's didn't it. want that. He was just like, you know what? I have, I have higher character than that. The last thing I'm going to do is go out like this. Like Russell Wilson, I can't work with you. And last time I checked, even when Belichick and Brady were beefing, all the way reports go back to 2014. It worked. They went to three Super Bowls since then. They won two of them. He won an MVP. And that's when they were beefing. So hold on. You trying to say they can't coexist? When Tom Brady just showed you, not only do you not have to blame somebody, but you can coexist. Let's go to another sport. Didn't Phil Jackson write a book? And Kobe Bryant, rest in peace, was the focus of that book. And he went in on Kobe Bryant. And then he also became his coach once again. And they won two championships. This new era of emotional in individual. Ah. And they're saying that you can't coexist and still succeed at the highest level. It's just because you're caught up in your feelings. It's, but it's not just your feelings. Let's be what? real again. What? Let's dive into places that might be beyond our jurisdiction. Like Russell that word, irreconcilable. Ir 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 <laughs> um, Russell Wilson may also be caught up in his pocket books. What you mean? He's he got paid twice already. His guaranteed money is out. Yeah, yeah. I'm oh, out of guaranteed so bread. we get brand new when we ain't got no money. What we have to we have to be <coughs> cognizant of the fact that we get brand broke. Okay. <laughs> Russell Wilson is now paying a million dollars a year, so they say, just to his trainers, just for his diet. Right. He used to live in a lifestyle. He looking around like, hey. I got to make sure I can keep this up. Remember, oh, Tom right. Brady, he could take pay cuts. Tom Brady was Gucci between him and his. He was good. Stop. But also, what happened in the middle of the dynasties right around 2007? Pete Carroll said, okay, let's see if we can do, well, Randy Moss. Just get one of the best receivers of all time in his prime. Belichick, Go yeah, ahead and yeah. out him to add him to the roster. Russell Wilson is looking around like, oh, hey, now, oh, hey, now, oh. I need some help. Please, if I'm going to stay here, I need some help, and I want you to run this offense through me. Pete Carroll don't want to do that, Sal. So at the end of the day, they're looking at things through two different vantage points. Both are right. Every now and then, not even every now and then, whenever there's a breakup, we always try to blame somebody, right? I, I said, said that in the beginning. You said no. People on social media like, oh, wait a second. Then I chose you today, so-and-so. Oh, I wonder if they broke up because of this reason. I wonder if they... What if there's just a mutually beneficial parting of ways? Russell Wilson's not at fault for trying to look at his pocketbooks, for trying to realize he's a top five quarterback. I want offenses to run through me. And Pete Carroll's not at fault for saying, I win by playing defense with a game manager. Both can be right. They don't need to coexist. They can just go their separate ways because they can't coexist. Man, man, man. Woo.
I got a five-year-old son. I hope he doesn't grow up inspired by these, these athletes who like. They inspired by money. They inspired by money. Okay, but that means you if you are crying about your money and you are crying about your million dollar dietitians and nutritionists, mm -hmm. that means you already got some money. And how'd you get that money? Seattle paid you once. Seattle paid you twice. Oh, it's not just about the money, because now the money guaranteed is running out. What you complaining about? You know how much we already have given you, Russell Wilson? Let's talk about this. You want to talk about the assets we've given you, Russell Wilson? Talk to me. Since you've been drafted? Who has the number one rushing attack in football since you've been drafted? You, Russell Wilson. Okay, that's not good enough. Since you've been drafted, who has the number one scoring defense and number one total defense tied? You, Russell Wilson. Since you've been drafted, let's talk about who you have right now. Um, name teams that have two 1,000-plus receivers. I'll wait. Name them, because there's only a couple. And you're talking about him having DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, and there's only two other teams out there. What are we talking about? So you had running game, you had defense, and now you got weapons. And you want to go somewhere else just because you went to the Super Bowl and realized that those guys are in situations that they're making better instead of complaining and blaming others. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. And I can see how I, I, I would hate to have to argue with you. Relationally. And a Hall of Fame coach. Oh, because here's the problem, Cell, is this. <coughs> love language is big, dog. Oh, let's go. Love language is big, dog. You know the five love languages, yeah, yes, yes, yes. quality, time, physical touch, action. Of service, words of <laughs> affirmation, gifts. Y'all read up on them at home. Right. Russell Wilson is like, hey, Pete Carroll, you're paying me in running the ball, Pete. Pete Carroll, you're paying me in a good defense, and that's one of my top flight love languages. But my first love language, Pete Carroll, is you trusting me to throw the ball and running the offense the way I want to run the offense. You doing what Pete doing. Russ, I gave you a running <laughs> game. Russ is like, thanks, but I ain't want that. But oh, you didn't want that Super Bowl that came hey! Oh, okay, I'm sorry, your book. But, 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 but maybe I, I gave you quality time. Yeah, but, but gifts serve me. But, but I gave you acts of service, but I'm a physical touch person. Stop going to Russell Wilson with, with acts of service, if you will, with, with love languages. Tell that he don't want to appreciate. You know what Russell Wilson wants. What does he want? He's told you he wants to cook. Let him cook. He and if you don't want to let him cook, let him go somewhere else where he can cook. Hell no, nah, because I bought these groceries. Hell no, nah, because it's my house. Hell no, nah, because your butt can't finish a meal. Like, he good. Like, my grandma told me a long time ago, when you're cooking breakfast, baby, make sure the eggs are last. You know what I'm saying? Because when I first got in there, I like oh, the eggs. Cook the them eggs, then the eggs, eggs get cold. cold. Eggs That's who Russell Wilson hey, is. don't do that. Yes, do that. Russell Wilson went in there this year and cooked the eggs first. Okay. Five, first five games. And he, they got cold. He's at least organic, high-quality, <laughs> grass-fed. All I'm saying is, if Russell Wilson had finished the deal by cooking in the beginning of the season like he did at the end of the season, especially that sorry pathetic 11 to 27 playoff game he had, then I would catch feelings with him because Russell did all he could. But when you didn't do all you could, how in the hell are you going to blame others who are supposed to be less than you for not doing as much as you? Coming up at the top of the hour, whoo, James Harden and the Nets are rolling despite missing Kevin Durant. We'll tell you if they need KD to win the East. But first, the coach say that they're thrilled to have Carson Wentz. <laughs> we'll tell you if we agree with that next on Speak for Yourself. Mm. Now, what's that word again? <laughs> hey, Speak for Yourself listeners. I wanted to tell you about our brand new Fox Sports app and website, foxsports.com. Reimagined for the modern sports fan. Go ahead, download the new app now. You don't even have to pause this episode. Every day on the new app and website, you'll see the top stories in sports, plus a rich world of written content, videos, social media, and analytics to give you a 360-degree view of the most important stories of the day. Streaming live TV has never been so easy or elegant. Every Fox Sports game, including all pregame and postgame shows, are just one click away. For the extra invested fan, we also go deep with real-time wagering lines, trending prop bets, win probability, and key player projections. So download the new Fox Sports app or visit www.foxsports.com. The Carson Wentz era in Philly is over. Hi, mm. Somebody cry a tear for me. Mm. But now it's officially the time for Carson to, Carson to join the Colts. Wentz is coming off the worst season in his five-year career, but now he's reunited, and it feels so good, <laughs> with former Eagles offensive coordinator Frank Wright. The Colts head coach said, quote, I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to coach Carson again, and he will be a fantastic addition to this organization. <laughs> now, Wentz met with media for the first time today as a Colt and was asked if he's washed up. Y'all take a listen. Oh, wow. 
Well, I'm going to be honest. I didn't know I'd been called washed up yet. So that's a injuries, new one. injuries. Uh, sorry. I don't read a lot of the newspapers or listen to a lot of the media stuff. Um, I often find out things from people like y'all, uh, family, friends sending me stuff. You know, I, I tried everything I could to once the off season hit to just get away, um, get away and, and spend a lot of time with my family and work out, get some hunting and all of those things just to kind of refresh my mind. So at the end of the day, I can't please everybody and people ha- are entitled their own to their own opinion. And, you know, I'm not going to sit and argue and dispute what people say, write, think, feel, you know, I, I can't please. I'll, I'll never win that game. Mm-hmm. Washed up. So disrespectful. Uh, so, Sal, <laughs> should the Colts be thrilled, close quote, to have Carson Wentz? No, they shouldn't be thrilled to have Carson Wentz. Not yet. Um, look, in life, we celebrate when you do something, not just your arrival. Hey, bro. What about children? Births. Wait, 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 stop. They celebrate it. I'm talking about some, I'm talking about some merit base. I'm not talking about relationships. <laughs> Boy, I take care of people that ain't dish in their home. <laughs> but this ain't a team. <laughs> I ain't giving out checks. <laughs> you ain't fighting for playing time, but I digress. I'm not celebrating you just here, because that's putting the cart in front of the horse. Uh-uh, Carson Wentz. No, no, no. Let me say this. One, I'm already on a on, on little bit of my nerve because of the fact that Carson Wentz is going back to Frank Wright and everybody thinks that's it. It's going to work. Do you know that going back to your ex is a failure sport? Have you done that before? I did it. Well, my high school ex got in college, said, let's try it again. Well, my college ex got to the pro level, said, let's try it again. It's a failure sport. It doesn't work out that way. You know why? Because you walk in thinking that 90% of the work is already done. All I got to do is catch up on what they like now. (laughs) No, you don't. You know what you need to know? Everything. Start back at square one because I am different and you are different. Frank Wright. Say what you want. You had a good year with Phillip Rivers. Say what you want. Now you're going to get somebody in the building when on arrival is not the same guy you departed from. That's what happened to me with my ex. I was like, you changed. And I need to find out how much you changed. Let's show Frank Wright how much Carson Wentz changed. Because when he had him, MVP candidate. Now, this is who's showing up in that building. Let's look at this full screen right here. Oh, what's that right word? Since Carson Wentz doesn't read a lot of newspapers and doesn't know what he is, is he washed up or not? Last, 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 last. In every damn category, that's who arrived in the building. You put candles on a cake for someone who's just arriving, who was last, where they just departed? No, sir, Bob. So until Carson Wentz can show me that he's done something, we just gonna wait on that celebration. I like to take. Ah, uh, thank you. I knew oh, I like to take. I like to take. Like take. Like take. <laughs> um, but come on, Frank Wright. The Colts they should be thrilled to have Carson Wentz. They were close last year. Yes. Three points away, real close yes. from yes. beating your Bills. Two minutes and thirty seconds away from making it to uh, what the, the 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 AFC, not the championship game, but at least making it to the seven, whatever it is. They were close. They was in the debate. All they needed was a quarterback who could make some plays. Oh, don't do that. That's it. That's it. We watched what? Phillip Rivers run out of gas before our eyes. I was sitting there in front of the TV like, ooh, the Colts going to pull this off. I'm a gloat all on Marcellus' face. He's going to be so sad when he see me at work. And then Phillip Rivers couldn't pull it off. But who can? Carson Wentz, oh. especially with Frank Wright. Now, so I'm just simply going to ask you a question. Can I get my, bl- my, my, my blind resume, my blind resume, real blind, real blind, real blind. So this quarterback who was tied for fifth in passing touchdowns and ninth in passing yards and third in interceptions, right? There's a quarterback, ninth passing yards, Mm. fifth passing touchdowns, third in interceptions. Now, I would be thrilled about having him because that's a top five quarterback. Would Mm. I not? Mm. You would be, correct? Yeah, yeah. 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 Now, who is that quarterback? That quarterback is just one simple. No, that ain't. That was a black black image before that. (laughs) I oh, now he, oh, I hate you. So my point is this. Just one and ago, Carson Wentz was a tied, top five About a week ago. Just one year ago, <laughs> yeah. Carson Wentz was a top five mm, dude. Mm. You telling me you're not going to be thrilled to have mm. a top five quarterback mm. just one season ago? Mm. You thrilled about having Cam Newton, who ain't been good in about three and a half, four seasons. <laughs> if you're thrilled about that, yeah. if you're thrilled about Jimmy G, who was a top seven quarterback a season ago, Oof. if you're thrilled Oof. about Oof. that, Oof. Coming. Coming. how would you not be thrilled about Carson Wentz? I give it to you like this. Please give it If to Carson would have got hurt this past season and we wouldn't have seen him, and the last we would have seen was Carson Wentz from 2019, we would be thrilled. 4,000 yards, first time in NFL history, 4,000-yard season, no 500-yard receivers. 
led his team to the playoffs with no 500-yard receivers, had his team in a good position, obviously, <laughs> uh, a home playoff good game. Position. <laughs> then he gets knocked out by a cheap shot, Jadavion Clowney. What do you mean cheap shot? Cheap shot Play cheap football, shot. bro. Cheap shot. Get yeah, up. He got flagged, then he got fined. Get up. He got flagged, then he got fined, and makes and it a cheap shot. Get up, too. With that being said, I'm thrilled about having a top five quarterback mm. one year removed. And if you're not, you got to be biased. Man, well, I'm biased. I don't care what you call me. It's what I listen to. That, what was that, Madeira or something said that? I don't care what they call you, baby. It's just what you pay attention to. I don't pay attention to you call me biased. I got these facts right here. One, two, three, four, five pages of facts. Carson Wentz, surprise me of how great you still are. Instead of me just being thrilled and celebrating you on arrival. One. Okay, I heard you were supposed to be the man when you came in here. I chose, man, ooh, he could wax poetic. This boy is a wordsmith. And you lived up to it. But when you got here day one, did you have a cake? <laughs> was, I <laughs> was I like, I chose, you're amazing. I'm going to wait till you prove it. Same with me. You probably heard things about me. I hope they were good. Point is, you waited for me to prove those things. You talking about a year ago. One year ago. Bruh, that's one not good ago. enough in the NFL. Uh, man, let's talk about this. How Carson Wentz has regressed in completion percentage, passing yards, and passer rating in each of the last two seasons. Not one. Two seasons. So you want to talk about a year ago how great he was? It's still in regression to his high point. I don't know if he continues to slide or not. Why do you think that everything is fixed just because you're with the guy who you were good with before? Maybe he's still good as a coach, but you're not as good as a player. But here's what I don't, here's what I don't understand. Okay. So many people are still holding on to hope that Ezekiel Elliott, because he's still only 26 or 27 years old, yes. will become that same Ezekiel Elliott. Yes. Now, Zeke has been in regression, but we're like, hey, he's still got the juice. Dak Prescott. He's coming off a losing season, and he's coming off a injury. But we're like, Cowboys paid him $160 million. Incredible move. Biggest free agent signing. But Zeke ain't been good in a minute. Dak was out all of last year, and when he was there, he was 2-3. and three. Yet Carson Wentz, who showed up and was bad, we're like, ah, he's terrible. Yeah, I ain't going to be thrilled to have him. Cowboys fans still thrilled about Zeke. I can tell Cowboys you. fans still thrilled about Zach, uh, yep. uh, Dak. Dak. You're still thrilled about Jimmy G. I can You're tell thrilled you. about uh, uh, Cam Newton. Everybody's thrilled about everybody and their mama, except why. Carson Wentz. Self, 4,000 yards, no 500 yard receivers. He was a top five quarterback just a year ago. You need to be thrilled about that, big dog. He had one bad year. No, one. he didn't. No, he actually didn't have one bad year. This is the problem. <clears throat> One, the reason why people still have rooting interest in the fact that Dak and Ezekiel still have some game in front of them is because they've never been last in anything. Bruh, your highs and lows are measured. When, when you have a bad year and then you follow that with a not worse year, his, what was a bad year? What was a bad year? wasn't a bad year. Hold on. I'm talking about compared to who he is. That's like, that's all they Look, okay. That's all right, you're here. That's you, you, let's, let's do it in simple terms for everybody. You have 10 sacks. Okay. Then the next year, you have six sacks. You all notice. Then the next year, you have no sacks. Sound like my career. Point being, <laughs> you know when you hit that zero, people are like, uh-uh. Nobody was rooting for Wiley anymore. Nobody rooting for Wentz anymore when you had Donut. Dog, last, you know how sorry some of these quarterbacks are in the NFL? And he was worse than them. On top of that, this birthday cake you want me to give you on day one is costing us $98 million in the next four seasons. All I'm saying is in mental approach, you got to earn what you're going to get out of here. You're going to have to kill what you're going to eat if you're Carson Wentz. But this whole celebration, Frank Wright reunion, just reminds me of my ex. And look, we broke up my, after my junior year. It was only a year between I got drafted and I saw her last. Boy, what a difference a year makes. And now I'm looking at Carson Wentz. It's not just one year. It's a couple of years. And then this is the same guy who's like, I don't listen to the noise. That's maybe the problem. You need to be able to have a processor that could take the good with the bad. Carson Wentz has only tweeted twice since he got benched. Carson Wentz has only posted twice on Instagram since he got benched, including one was a thank you, goodbye. You know what that tells me? You can't take it all in. So when someone is telling you the facts of like, dog, you slipping, you sitting there like, I ain't listening to that. But when I set you up, all day you want to talk. That's a problem for me. Have balance, brother. Well, let me, let me reframe everybody's okay. mindset. Because okay. okay. I heard this phrase once, and I'm, I'm going to give it to you all like this. 
If you're Frank Wright, the reason you're thrilled is because you know the value of the individual when he's in your hands. What, what do I mean? When like, he was in your when hands. When he is in your hands. When Sam, he was. A basketball in my <laughs> hands worth what? About $17. But in the hands of <laughs> LeBron James, what about $40 million a year? A football in my hands, what about $20? But in the hands oh, of Dak Prescott, worth about $160 million like over it. the case of like years. Like so it. Carson Wentz, in the hands of Doug Peterson exclusively, last in the NFL. But in the hands of Frank Wright is a top flight quarterback. Frank Wright is thrilled about having Carson Wentz because he knows the value when Carson Wentz is in his hands. Mm. Carson Wentz in the hands of somebody else might be dirt. But Carson Wentz in the hands of Frank Wright it's a big time playmaker, a big time money maker. Basketball in my hands might be nothing but some plastic. But in the hands of LeBron James, it's a completely different story. Yeah. I'm thrilled about having Carson mm. Wentz if I'm Frank Wright because I know just how powerful Carson Wentz is when he's in my hands. I don't care about him when he's in anybody else's hands. But in my hands, I'm going to make magic. That's where Frank Wright is at. Yeah, that's where he is. And he still needs to have some caution in terms of has everything changed? Has everything changed? Or is Carson Wentz the same guy, man? Like, here's the problem. I have a list of stuff here that I could really attack Carson Wentz with. And I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this. <laughs> Carson Wentz was an MVP candidate. When the last time you seen an MVP candidate benched? Like within two years. Okay, we don't. Okay. Peyton Bench. Manning. Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning. There we go. Nah. He got benched. Yeah, but that was, he was an MVP yeah, candidate. That was in 2015. In 13, he was an MVP candidate, and by uh, 15, he got benched. Okay, I'll give you one. Call. Okay, give you one. Call. But look at, that's my point. When he did get benched, what happened? Bye, Peyton. Don't you ever come back and play football? I'll give you that point. Okay. <laughs> Carson's still playing football. Okay, that's why people look at him like, mm. how about this? Where's your coach? Where's Doug Peterson? You got that dude fired. And you, hey, buddy. He got fired, and you were an MVP candidate, but he got fired trying to fight with you when you were last in everything. Nick Foles energized a team that you couldn't energize. You have played one quarter of January football in your entire life, and you got the nerve to say, where's my birthday cake when I show up? No, brother. And then you got benched again for Jalen Hurts. He's a second rounder, bro. He's a rookie. When do you know MVP candidate? Okay, this is how I get Peyton Manning out this. An MVP candidate who was benched for a second rounder that was a rookie. Has that ever happened? <laughs> <laughs> that's my you just limited the qualifications so much. Yes. And that's why this is a unique situation that only Frank Wright maybe can fix, but the odds are he can't even fix this. Yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from, but it's you very, better. very, 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 very simple. On the outside, for everybody else, I could understand how you would not be thrilled. But like you said in your previous relationship, Sal, if you can dictate the success of the relationship, then you also should be able to dictate your excitement about entering into the relationship. Okay, I'm listening. And so if you can dictate the success of the relationship between you and your ex that you got back with, mm. then you should be able to dictate the excitement. Mm. Frank Wright, he can dictate the success of him and Carson Wentz. So that's why I ain't going to be... Yeah, he can, as a head coach, as an OC. Can I say one more thing? Please. If you could only do well on the show with me and nobody else, I just want I told her just one day, me and Wiley, though, and I'm like, okay, that's that's amazing, but Wiley doing other things, too. Like, Frank Wright, like, only with Carson Wentz, and just frankly, no, I, I could work with Philip Rivers and others. What about you, Carson Wentz? This is all on Carson Wentz, not Frank well, Wright. Let's establish this. Do you give credit to Carson Wentz's 2019 season? To that black image? What do you mean? No, I don't give You don't give credit no, to I, him. That was a good year. It was a great year. It, no, it, it was right. a great year, except by his standard, it was a lesser year. But, Sal, Be if real. Bill Gates makes $2 billion a year, then one year he only makes $1.7 bill. Yeah. I'm not going to be mad at Bill Gates. I'm not mad at that year. never hit your high. I'm not mad at that year. You know what I'm mad at? The next year, he makes no money. And I'm like, damn, Bill, what's going on? And that's the problem. He went from... Okay, drop off to fall off. Can't do that in the NFL and still get inspired. Coming up, Arizona has added some big names this offseason. We'll tell you if we're buying stock in the new look Cardinals. That's next on Speak for Yourself. Hey, Speak for Yourself listeners. It's Charlotte Wilder here to tell you about my new podcast with Mark Titus called The People's Sports Podcast. It comes out every Thursday, and Mark and I take one of the big stories of the week, and then we go off on tangents you never saw coming. This might mean that we start talking about the Dodgers winning the World Series and end up wondering if Knicks fans deserve happiness, or begin with LeBron's greatness and end up drafting our ultimate beer league softball team made up of old athletes. 
whatever it is. The only rule of the show is that it has to be fun and funny because these days we can all use as many laughs as we can get. So check it out wherever you get your podcasts and come down weird sports rabbit holes with us. We can't wait to have you. Now, back to Speak for Yourself. Sunday, the best season ever continues on Fox as NASCAR Cup Series rolls into Atlanta, where every turn is his own test. You can catch all the action for the Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500 at 3 Eastern on Fox and anywhere on the Fox Sports app. Let's head to Arizona. Nice. Where the Cardinals added three-time Defensive Player of the Year, J.J. Watt, earlier this month. Now they're adding a seven-time Pro Bowler, signing A.J. Green to a one-year deal. Green had the fewest touchdown catches and receiving yards in his career last season, but he's expected to be the second receiver behind DeAndre Hopkins. So, Acho, you buying stock in the new look Cardinals? <laughs> no, big dog. If this was Madden, maybe, right? Like, because the new look Cardinals, they have the all name team. Oh. All name team, oh. big dog. You got mm. names like Fitzgerald, Watt. Green Hopkins on the back of the jersey. Like, yeah, if it was 2017, I'm buying stock in them. But not now. If it was 2015, I'm buying stock in them. But I ain't now. So let me take y'all back, right? If it was 15, I'll tell you why I'm buying stock in that team. Because in 2015, J.J. Watt, 17 and a half sacks. A.J. Green, 1,300 reception yards. Larry Fitzgerald, 1,200 reception yards. But last year, five sacks, 500 yards. 400 yards. Like, there's nothing to buy stock in, but I'm going to end my first lap with story time because bump all the stats. Y'all will digest this more as I tell it to y'all in true story form. 2015, I'm playing for the Philadelphia Eagles. My dog. We acquired Marcel. Uh, Me? Not you. I was there. <laughs> no. no sex. Guarantee you that. We acquired Miles Austin. We acquired DeMarco Murray. Damn, remember we him? had Riley Cooper. We Marcus. acquired Kiko Alonso, who's a star linebacker at the time. We still had Michael Kendricks, who had just gotten paid at the time. Now, let me break this down for y'all. All of a sudden, our roster got out of balance because you had really good names, but somebody got to play special teams. Mm. So I'm looking up, and our $32 million linebackers running down on kickoff. Okay. He don't want to be there, and a special teams coach don't want to be there. Hmm. I'm looking down, and we have a 31-year-old Miles Austin, <clears throat> five years removed from a Pro Bowl, on punt protection. Damn. He don't want to be there. And our special teams well, still don't want to be there. Oh, nah, he wasn't the time. He wasn't okay. the time. He was, he was you imagine time. that? You date Kim Kardashian, you on punt team. <laughs> But all that Break to up. say is, like, <laughs> the rosters are imbalanced. Hell. If you're the Arizona Cardinals, your third or fourth rotational defensive and defensive lineman has to be on kick return. Okay. Well, you're going to look That's down it. at your third or fourth lineman, and you're going to see J.J. Watt. Like this. He ain't playing kick return. So now a starter going to have to. You're going to look your third or fourth receiver usually has to be on special teams. Punt. Mm. You're going to mm. look at your third or fourth receiver, <clears throat> go down to A.J. Green. He's not doing that. I surmise all this to say. 2014 with the Eagles, we had the number one special teams unit in the league. 2015, when we brought in great names but lackluster game because of age, we had the 27th ranked special teams unit ah, in the league. Yeah. Things changed. We went from 10 and 6 mm. to 7 and 9 or 6 and 10. Mm. The Cardinals, they got some names. The question is, do they still got the game? Mm. I love these moves. And um, I love the names and the game that's coming. You got to understand... Why you guys in Philadelphia had a dramatic drop-off? Largely because of effort. It wasn't about the names. It was about what the emotional content were of those same players. Break this down. I saw on your full screen you left some names out. Yeah. <laughs> was DeAndre Hopkins on there? Yeah, Best wasn't. receiver in football. Um, he wasn't on there? Okay, whatever. And you know who else wasn't on there? Another acquisition this year. Matt Prater. I know it's not sexy. I know it's not sexy for an 8-8 eight eight team to go out there and get a 36-year-old field goal kicker. But you know what is sexy? That same team that was 8-8 eight eight last year lost two definite games by field goals and a third one potentially by a field goal. So let's talk about what that means. When you have missed kicks in two of your games that if you would have made those kicks, you win those games, you're a 10-win team. 11-win team potentially. Playoff team, potentially. So they went out there and solidified that position with Matt Prater. Oh, who's Matt Prater? Just uh, the guy who has the NFL record for the longest field goal ever. Who's Matt Prater? Oh, just the guy who has the highest hit percentage, kick percentage from 50-plus yards. So who's Matt Prater? A guy who can win those two or three games that you lost last year that could have got you into the playoffs. That's kicker. Uh, That's what we're hanging our hat on oh, right now. Oh, you thought I was kicker. dumb, bro? You you used, kicker. Your, you used to your old co-host, not me. Um, J.J. Watt. Let's talk about J.J. Watt. Because once again, you want to point out five sacks. Yes, sir. Four the year before. Oh, thank God I was a defensive lineman. Because you only get a sack when they throw the football, correct? Sure. Who had the second fewest 
pass rush attempts of their career last year. J.J. Watt, you want to know why? Because he was on the Houston Texans. That was 4-12. and 12. What does 4-12 and 12 mean to you if you're a defender? Ugh. We are behind a lot of games. And what does that also mean? They are going to run the football down our throat. J.J. Watt is not as sorry as those numbers are suggesting. J.J. Watt still got a lot in the tank, A bro. lot in the tank? A lot. No, no, no. We've had this conversation. Don't come lying in front of the people. You done told me J.J. Watt don't have a lot in the no, tank. No, I told you. Somebody else said that, and I was with my boy. But uh, no, J.J. Watt, I say he's going to get double digits with the attempts. It's all about the attempts, dog. He's still, he's one notch off in explosiveness. The rest, handwork, footwork. Oh, so, yeah. It's J.J. Watt, JJ Watt still 49th got the ninth in sacks in the last five seasons. Dog. 49th. He has one double digit dog. sack season since 2015. Dog, that's dog. injuries. Okay, you, here's my last name. Since you want to go here, J.J. Watt, I told you about the pass rush opportunities he didn't have and the injuries, obviously. The last one, A.J. Green. A.J. Green was seen on the sidelines last year, week five, going ham on people. They ain't going to use me. Trade me. Let me go. He tried to silence that noise. But the real is when he's healthy and not frustrated, he's your number two potential number three. Oh, you add all that up, man. That looked like some good gumbo, Grandma would say. Got to bring in Fox NFL analyst Bucky Brooks. So, Bucky, you buying stock in the new look Cardinals? I am. Uh, Marcellus, I'm so surprised at you because I remember that dude, the DJ. <laughs> that dude, the DJ, that used to get it crunk at Vegas pool parties, be doing it up, day parties and all that. That's but you know what these dudes are now? They're what we never want to be. <laughs> They're the old guys in the club. Oh, They're the man. guys that got the big baggy jeans <laughs> yeah. on, everybody wearing the yeah. jeans. They're not, they're not wearing the stuff that is hot. They're not hot anymore. And so, unfortunately, oh, I like the Cardinals. I like A.J. Green, J.J. Watt, Rodney Hudson. I like all of those dudes as players in their prime. However, they're the old guys. And unless there's a fountain of youth down there in the desert in Arizona, I don't know how these guys are going to get better because not <laughs> only are they old, they still are contending with the young hoppers in that division. When I look at the L.A. Rams, man, Jalen Ramsey, Aaron Donald, they bring in Matthew Stafford. I look at the San Francisco 49ers. They got Trent Williams back. They bring over Alex Mack. We know they're going to get healthy with Nick Bosa and company coming back. Russell Wilson still has plenty of talent. He's been able to do it with all of those weapons in Seattle. So who are they better than? So this looks nice. And if we were playing the video game, as Facts. Acho said, look, this would be great. Oh, man, we can put them all up. Who's up there? Madden numbers. But right now, they're still mired in the muck. They're the fourth best team in this division. I just don't know how this makes them better. They're certainly not contenders. Here the thing, Bucky, you hit the nail on the head. The kicker with old guys, Bucky, and the kicker with the old dudes in the club, they don't realize they the old dudes in the club. <laughs> Like, that's the problem. Like, the <laughs> old dudes still got young mentalities. They be in the club thinking they youngsters, but you're like, ew, what are, what are you yeah, here for? What are you like, doing? Like, straight up. Like, <laughs> and when I was in college, Buck, you know 6th Street down in Austin, Texas. Yeah. You don't reference it. Me too. Every now and then, you would see, like, the 31-year-old dudes on their, like, 8th, ninth, 10th year in the league back in the club. And I'd be like, I know why I'm here. I'm 21. But, like... Where your wife and kids at? Man, like, you what stop. you doing out in the club? Where your wife and kids at? You 30? <laughs> yeah. yeah! I ain't in the club. Life oh, comes at you fast. Uh, but I ain't in the Boy, club. Yeah, it's a pandemic. That's why. You're going to be in the club <laughs> September. <laughs> Here the point is, like, J.J. Watt, you can't tell him he's over the hill. Yeah. A.J. Green, you can't tell him he's over the hill. Yeah. None of these cats, you can't tell them they over the hill. But the problem is, their game is over the hill while their mindset is not. So when you ask them to do third string or third team or a third player on the depth chart type of stuff, yes, okay. they're going to be looking at you like, yeah. I'm still $100 million, J.J. Watt. Mm. I'm still seven Man. straight Pro Bowl, A.J. Mm. Green. And that's the dichotomy. That will be the dilemma, Sal. So. Man, damn, y'all some broke-ass kids growing up. I could tell because when, you know, you walk around the neighborhood, you see that lemon tree, y'all the one that grabbed the lemon and go like this. Ugh, what you going to do with that? And I grabbed that same lemon. I was like, squeeze it up. Give me some sugar, homie. <laughs> Here's a nickel. What's up? Give me that. I had a lemonade stand. You know why? Because I know how to cook it up. Y'all seeing all the bad in this. I see nothing but the good. Let me list it. First of all, this is a team that was 6-3 and three last year. And then all of a sudden, the injuries caught up with them. And they got stagnant. But this is a team that's really close. Let's remind you, last year, the Super Bowl champions were 7-5. and five. And I remind you, the year before that, Tampa Bay, without Tom Brady, was 7-9. and nine. 
Bring it. Speaking of Tom Brady, it's amazing that Bucky Brooks just gave the same take he gave about Tom Brady that he did right now about this Arizona Cardinals team. Remember? Oh, Tom Brady, man, you the old man in the club. You're going to Tampa Bay, but you ain't got it no more. I remember, this is, yeah, you better laugh forward, damn it. Uh, this is, <laughs> Aaron Rodgers, oh, on decline, he ain't going to do nothing. Just win the MVP. The point is, y'all be trying to give people death certificates instead of celebrations in the moment. Let me continue to list who's coming back additions. Chandler Jones, y'all remember him? He, he was hurt last he year. Coming back with them 32 sacks he had in the two previous years. Let's talk about the fact that this is a team that is destined to do better because of the relationship and the growth between Kyler Murray and Coach. Kyler Murray now is going to be like, all right, get it, see it, eight and eight, good, we had injuries, all right, I got a squad, don't lie, let's look at this team, sixth in total offense, seventh in rushing offense, okay, top ten defense, y'all sleeping on this team, fourth most sacks last year without Chandler Jones, I don't know what y'all talking about, but to me, I'm making lemonade out here and getting my nickels. Okay, so now that you referenced the coach, because ultimately it's up to the coach to go be there. Yeah, I didn't want to go there. Talk about Bucky. all the old dudes <laughs> and all those other things. So now we're going to talk about Cliff Kingsbury. Please. Cliff Kingsbury, who doesn't have a winning record mm. at Texas Tech. He doesn't have a winning record in the, in the NFL. Oh. Why am I to oh. believe that he suddenly oh. is going to figure it out oh. with all of these That's old bad. dudes to get oh. them going? So, Marcellus. Let's just call a spade a spade. Call it we can talk about the old guys, but yes, I don't know if they have the right guy in the front of the room B leading them. And so if you told me they had somebody else, then that would be one thing. But now we got Cliff Kingsbury mm. leading a bunch of old dudes say. trying to get them to the promised land when he has never been to the promised land. Yeah, I'm out on the Cardinals. Mm. Bucky, <laughs> no, I ain't want to go there, big boy. I, 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 I do. Sometimes I reserve my truth in the moment because the truth is so harsh. The truth can cut. Man. The truth can be mean. I ain't want to say it. Say For sale. What? My dog Cliff Kingsbury, who's running the ship of all these old cats, he had a losing record at Texas Tech in college, got a promotion to the NFL, still got a losing record, and you gonna trust him to get all these old dudes to the club, pull what they trying to pull, and get them back home safely? No, sir. Ain't gonna happen, Sale. Ain't gonna happen. You ready? You ready? You ready? What was Bill Belichick's record before he got to New England? Losing. What was Bill Belichick's record the first year in New England? I'll wait. Okay, my point is this. Y'all want to that's the I use the best example that shows you that some people start slow. Oh my God. Some people are late bloomers. You're looking at one right slower here. Can we go? <laughs> what do you mean slower? Eight and eight? What do you mean? You act like they were bump work. They weren't losers last year. They were eight and eight, as Acho loves to do, tread water. That's who they were. But I saw their quarterback, who's also a leader on this team, go from 64% year one to 67% in terms Ooh. of year two. Imagine that growth, not only from their quarterback, but also from their coach. A lot of this is going to happen right this way. After the break, James Harden is getting it done without an injured Kevin Durant. We'll tell you if the Nets need KD to win the East. That's next on Speak for Yourself. Reasonable doubt, though. I created it. You're watching Speak for Yourself. Marcel Swally, Emmanuel Acho. My dog. My dog. Let's head to Brooklyn. In the house where the Nets won their sixth straight last night behind James Harden, 40 point triple double. Brooklyn was missing Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant was out for his 13th straight game. Steve Nash said KD still has a couple weeks till he'll be ready for game action. Despite the injuries, the Nets are on top in the East with the Sixers. Joined now by Fox NBA analyst Slick Rick DeBuker with the wife with the guns. Happy birthday again, brother. But Acho, do the Nets need Kevin Durant to win the East? Absolutely. Now, first off, kudos to James Harden. He out there balling right now with Kyrie, without Kyrie, and clearly without KD. Oof. But... Let's not act like we ain't seen this before. Like, we've seen Harden win regular season MVPs. Really? We've seen, yeah, on, we've on seen the Nets, James on Harden. On the Nets? We've seen James oh, Harden sorry. go crazy, mm. if not crazier, before. But what happens come playoff time? We've also seen the same story of James Harden falter with that style of play and the team style of play. James Harden goes crazy in a regular season, and that's why I'm not going to take anything away from what he's doing right now in a regular season. But y'all asking me, can they win the East? I'm assuming we're having a serious conversation about the Eastern Conference Finals, not just win the East in the regular season, but assuming we're having an adult conversation about winning the Eastern Conference Finals, I'm going to say no, and I'm going to remind y'all of history before I pass this baton. Hmm. 2013, what happened? First round loss to the Thunder. Let's jump up to 15. What happened? I uh, got blown out by the Warriors. But let's jump up to when James Harden really started to mature into the real James Harden. <laughs> 2017, oh, they go into a must-win game against the Spurs. 
Doesn't James Harden go two for 11 and lose that game, get blown out? What happened in 2018? Miss 27 straight three-pointers and lose in a must-win game against the Warriors? Obviously, last year, it got outmanned by the Lakers. Without Kevin Durant, I think that James Harden will either falter in the playoffs like he's shown us a tendency to do. No problem. It's just what he's shown us doing. Or he will be outmanned like he's also shown us a tendency to do. I think in the regular season, they're fine. But come playoff time, nah, they need KD. Hmm. I have always said that the mature, big picture Acho is the best. <laughs> Without question. Mm. I, I assume, I, look, when this question came up for today's show, I started jamming my refresh button. I was like, this can't be right. The, the Nets must be running away with the East that we would be even be asking this question. Mm. They, they must be like 10 games ahead of everybody else. And then I, but it wasn't my computer. They're, they're neck and neck with the Philadelphia 76ers for the best record in the Eastern Conference. And yes, I know they've won 14 of 15 without Kevin Durant. Oof. But if we start to parse those 15 games, uh, it falls apart pretty quickly in terms of exactly what they've accomplished. The only real quality win in those 15 games is against the Phoenix Suns, who are young and talented, but still learning how to win. The Lakers, they played without Dennis Schroeder and AD. The Clippers, we talked about it. That bogus foul call at the end of the game changed that game and would have gone another way if, uh, if not for the officiating. So when I look at it, the next best team that they have played are the San Antonio Spurs. And oh, by the way, they beat them in overtime without their starting forward, Kelton Johnson, and without their backup small forward, uh, Rudy, uh, Rudy Gay. So when I look at it, I assume that we're asking this question because they've gone 14 and one without Kevin Durant. To Acho's point, has nothing to do with winning in the postseason. But quite honestly, I can't even give it that much credit for a regular season mm, run talk until I see them play against stiffer competition. Sheesh. Oh my goodness. Uh. This is an easy one for me. I ain't had to re hit the refresh button. I was like, shoot, I can go into the office right now and do this one without even prepping. Yes, this team is going to do something in the playoffs. Yes, this team is going to ball out, even without Kevin Durant. They don't need him to win the East. Let me tell you guys something. No one in the East is scary, and y'all know this, but y'all just keep every single year trying to prop these teams up so that one day one of them going to pop from the pack. Has it happened? Have the 76ers ever popped from the pack every time we talk about them? And we know about the uncertainty of Joel Embiid in this moment, but also, as Acho wanted to point out, historically, injury concerns all the time with Joel Embiid. And once again... He's out right now, expected to miss two weeks, and then be re-evaluated. So we don't know what's going on with him. What about the Bucs and their best record and the Bucs and Giannis? Can he win close games in the playoffs? Um, have they been to the finals yet with these loaded squads and the two-time back-to-back MVP? Nope, not at all. Let's talk about the Boston Celtics, who right now are currently seventh in the East. Supposed to be scared of them? Who are we talking about here? The point is, this team is rolling. Y'all try to sneeze at the fact that, oh, they won 14 to 15, but who cares? That matters when you're talking about a team that was treading water before all of a sudden they got their traction. Now, here's my kicker. This is why I know this team is going to ball out. And they've been balling out without Kevin Durant. They have the number one ranked scoring offense and the number one ranked field goal percentage on offense. Each of the last eight teams to lead the league in field goal percentage has reached the finals. So, enough said, slam dunk, drop the mic. I don't know how this team is going to be slowed down, especially when they don't really have any adversaries in their path. Bruh, in order to get to the finals, we have to at least assess who was in the Eastern Conference Finals just last year. Like, let's, heat, let's at least heat. go there. You got the Heat, you got the Bucks. Now, let's talk about the Heat. Have they or have they not won 11 out of 13? I checked the apps the other day about three weeks ago. I was like, oh, where the Heat at? The Heat, like, sitting in seventh or eighth in the East? What's going on? And then uh, you check every other day, and it's like, oh, Heat are climbing. They're climbing. They're climbing. Sitting at fourth right now. Why? Because they've won 11 out of the last 13. Mm. Um, well, I was. Is that, is that better than Brooklyn? Oh, okay, I'll wait. They're <laughs> surging. And then you talk oh, about the Brooklyn's Bucks. not surging? Then you talk about the Bucks. Also oh, surging. So when I look at the teams that you at least will have to go through, and excuse me, it was the Heat and the Celtics as opposed to the Heat and the Bucks. Thanks. You know you don't have to go through the Bucks. You know you don't have to go through the Heat. 
and without KD. They might get close, Marcellus, but be real. They're not going to get all the way there. Man, stop. Marcellus, this is what I don't get about your argument. You're killing the Bucs because they haven't proved it yet. You're killing the Sixers because they haven't proved it yet. Talk to them, Slick. The Brooklyn Nets, we're going to go with them because they what? Mm -mm. They haven't proved it yet. They haven't. This iteration of the Brooklyn Nets has not proved that they can win in the postseason. And when going back to the 14 run, really how many of the top teams, that team that Acho mentioned, Miami or Philadelphia or Milwaukee, how many times did they play those guys, mm. the best teams in the East, mm. in that 15-game run? Mm. Not, not once. Not one of them. Oh. And those happen to be all three top 10 defenses in the entire league. And that's really what it's going to come down to. Yes, Brooklyn has the best offense in the league regular season right now, but they're mm. going to have to face at least one of the top five defenses in, Mil uh, in Philadelphia or Miami, both top five, and Milwaukee is ninth, and they just added P.J. Tucker. They're on their way up. So that's going to be the question. I need to see this Brooklyn team mm. against a team that really defends. And honestly, whether it's East or West, they haven't had to play that team yet. And here's the other thing, Slick, that I was, I was trying to be on Marcellus' side no, of don't. this argument. Early, when I was prepping the show, so I was like, you know what? I want to sing Kumbaya with my guy for at least one block. I mm. wanted to. Mm. But then I started thinking... What has Kyrie done without LeBron? Because the Celtics went to the finals without Kyrie. Then with Kyrie, they didn't go to the finals. Then Kyrie was gone and he went back to the Eastern Conference finals, that is. And then James Harden, what has he ever done as far as making it to a NBA finals by oh himself? My. Oh, wait, he has in sales. So you're going to take up two parts and hope that somehow they become whole? Now, Kevin Durant. That's the major piece. That's a major player. But ain't no way you won't give me Kyrie, who ain't really accomplished nothing as far as NBA finals without LeBron. And then add up James Harden, who ain't really accomplished nothing in Houston as far as playoff masterful success, and think that somehow that combination without Kevin Durant is going to get you ultimate success. Not going to happen. Man, y'all act like there has never been a first-time NBA champions <laughs> in the NBA. I heard all this talk about AD last year, the same stuff, and then AD became a... NBA champion. LeBron James was hey, there. hey, that's the point. It's a new construction. It's a new teammate. It's a new situation. But let me give it to you like it was given to me growing up. Slick Rick DeBuker wanted to sit there and say, hey, man, what are you talking about? These guys, and you want to diminish the Bucks. And Marcellus, you want to diminish the Celtics uh, because look what they've done with their opportunities. I'm going to take you back to my childhood. Let's go here. I don't want to go. Yeah, you're going, scary. damn it. We, we all slossing right now. Uh, listen to this. When I was growing up, all I wanted was an opportunity. All I wanted was a chance. And you know why I knew I had to take advantage of my opportunities when they were presented and the chance I was going to get in life? Because I had uncles who squandered their same opportunities and squandered away their same chances. And that sat with me. I internalized that. I said, when I get my shot, boy, I'm not going to miss. Why do I bring that up right now? Because it's okay for me to look at the Uncle Bucks. <laughs> and they've had chances and opportunities and squandered them away. It's okay for me to look at the Uncle 76ers and look at them opportunities they just gave away. It's okay to look at the Uncle Boston Celtics and say, damn, when y'all ever gonna take advantage of all that talent? But this is a new situation. This is the Marcellus Brooklyn Nets coming up who is not gonna miss when they get their opportunity. I remind you, the Nets are 2-0 versus Boston this year. Uh-oh. The Nets won the only matchup between... You forgetting Philly. Hey, You're not man. mentioning Ann Philly. I ain't going yet. I'm going to get there. I ain't never scared. Um, okay. The Bucks. they beat the Bucks in the only matchup this season. And they're 1-1 one one against the 76ers. But I think they will Don't not do lose that. to them again. Don't do that. Joe L. Embiid is not going to be back in the lineup. You got something else to say, Slick, about me or my uncle? What'd it do? No, 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 no. It's not your uncle. I'm just telling you, Marcellus, I wish I had been with you during your clubbing days. Because I know that the chicks that were there that you'd seen, you're like, nah, I got that. Oh, look at that. That's not. Let's yeah, go talk to that. <laughs> the new thing on the block is your thing. And that's what the Brooklyn Nets are. That mm. doesn't mean they're the best thing. Mm. They're just the new thing. Man, you could have saved me four engagements if you had told me that before. <laughs> you're damn right the new thing was the best thing. But I digress. Coming up, Carson Wentz is in Indy. But will he make the coach contenders in the AFC? We'll answer that next on Speak for Yourself. 
Now, the Colts have been pretty quiet in free agency so far, but their biggest move this offseason was trading for Carson Wentz. The new Colt was introduced today after spending five seasons in Philadelphia. Wentz is joining a Colts team that finished 11-5 last season and is projected to be on top in the AFC South, according to Fox Bet Sports Book. Bucky Brooks is back with us, but Marcel is you up first. Does Carson Wentz make the Colts legit contenders in the AFC? Legit contenders? No, because I don't know if Carson Wentz is going to be legit as a Colt. Um, and that's just facts. Like, Carson Wentz has been a little yin-yang in terms of his career. I talked about the regression compared to himself in the last couple of seasons. But more importantly, just overall, like, he's barely above 500 as a starting quarterback, 35, 32, and 1. Okay, that's cool. You're a winner at least, barely. Uh, but if you take away that magical season, which I don't like to do, but I just want to highlight how he's been the rest of the time, 24, 30, and 1. In four seasons. Uh-oh. So who are you getting, Carson Wentz, in terms of his potential? Is he going to go back to 2017? Or is he going to give you what he's been giving you for the other four seasons? So now you start to look around. You start to see, man, we have what it takes because Phillip Rivers showed us we were that close to beating the Buffalo Bills last year, which was a really interesting game. They had 472 yards, zero turnovers, and still lost that ball game by three points. Woo! Special performance by that team, especially Phillip Rivers, but close is not good enough. Let's look at Carson Wentz in this situation. This is what's sad. Um, when I look at Mitch Trubisky, Ryan Fitzpatrick, and Kyle Allen, I look at quarterbacks that have better completion percentages than my man. Carson Wentz the last two years, so Acho can understand. I'm talking about 2020 and 2019. When I look at Gardner Minshew and Derek Carr, I look at quarterbacks that have more passing yards per game than this same Carson Wentz. When I look at Phillip Rivers, as I mentioned, and Jared Goff, who nobody seemed to want, but he landed, have better passer ratings than this same Carson Wentz. I don't know if the plug and play is going to work because Phillip Rivers did something special with his team last year. Wait and see if Carson Wentz can duplicate that same thing. Man, I do think that the Colts are legit contenders with Carson Wentz. But first off, let's talk about it like this. In the AFC, you got the Chiefs standing head and shoulders above the rest, at least a head above the rest. Now, everybody else, you have the Browns, I would say the Ravens, I would say the Bills, I would say the Colts, I would say the Titans, all kind of muddied up in that picture of who is next. You can't tell me that Carson Wentz doesn't elevate that Colts team that's muddied up in that picture. I'm not saying they're going to be Super Bowl champs. But they're definitely legit contenders who can beat the Browns, the Ravens, the Bills on any given day. I also think about, Sal, you got to go to head coach, quarterback combination. That's actually an indicator of success. Yep. Tom Brady, Bruce Arians, great combination. They won the Super Bowl this year. Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, great combination in the Super Bowl this year. Now you start to get to the AFC. I'm going to take Carson Wentz and Frank Wright just as much as I'm going to take Josh Allen. I'm going to take Carson Wentz and Frank Wright just as much as I'm going to take Lamar Jackson and Harbaugh. I think that they are right there up in the conversation in the AFC as legitimized contenders. But then when you look at the Colts, top 10 offense, top 10 defense. Not many teams in the NFL are top 10, top 10. Three mm. points away from beating the Bills. Two minutes and 30 seconds away from beating the Bills in that playoff game. You're telling me that Carson Wentz reunited with Frank Wright isn't better than Phillip Rivers at 39 years of age with Frank Wright? That's where you're wrong. That's where the difference oh. lies. Legit contenders with Carson Wentz. Yeah, this is something funny because I've been beating up on Carson Wentz where it seems like a full year. But well, what I'm going to do, with homie, and I know, Marcellus, this is going to be tough for you. I'm going to flip sides, homie. Man. I'm going to say that they are contenders in this situation with Flip Carson flop. Wentz. And the reason why they're contenders is because Frank Wright knows exactly about Carson Wentz. And one of the big misnomers about Carson Wentz, it wasn't that he's not good. He just doesn't know his role. See, when he was with the Philadelphia Eagles, he thought he was a lead actor. He thought it should be about him, that his name should be on the marquee, that he was the star of the show. But that's not how he's always been his most successful. When you go back and look at how he played successfully at North Dakota State, he was a supporting actor, meaning he only managed the team. He didn't have to do everything. He only threw the ball about 24.9 times per game. He was a part of five straight national champions. When you think to his 2017 year, when he was at an MVP level, do you know it was the fewest pass attempts per game that he ever had? He only averaged 33. In all the other years, it was always up 36, 37 per. So Frank Wright knows less Carson Wentz is better, more bang for the buck. So 
In this situation, when you have a team with a dominant offensive line, young running backs that can run, Jonathan Taylor, Naheem Hines, a top 10 defense, they absolutely are contenders because Frank Wright knows, Carson, this isn't about you. It's about the team. We don't need great. We only need good. And if we get good quarterback play, we'll win. So, yes, they're contenders because they won't ask Carson to step outside of his role. Mm -hmm. They will have him as a supporting actor, not as the lead actor. It's going to see you wake up. Man, man, I ain't never seen a movie budget where they paying somebody like they're the lead actor, but they ain't asking them to go out there and read the most lines. (laughs) Oh, sucker getting $98 million. Hey, hey, you ain't no supporting actor. This is your movie, bro. It's going to go or it's not going to go based on you. I love you, Bucky boy. I listen to everything Bucky says. Bucky... Bucky's funny. Bucky said, you know, at North Dakota State, when he won five national championships, he threw for only about 24.9. That's exact. What you mean only about? 24.9 ain't no about. I can't remember. You I went had right to it. And I, I love that right. Be- because, Bucky, I don't wear glasses, but I feel like I'm a nerd, too. Like, this is something I want to bring up. His Three. I want to bring up some numbers that don't suggest that we're going to get a good version of Carson Wentz since we saw what we saw from him last year. Let's talk about quarterbacks that uh, threw for under the Mendoza line in football. That's under 60% completion percentage. And then they threw for over 15 or more picks. Let me tell you how those quarterbacks fared. I'm going to give you some names. Donovan McNabb did that. And after that season, that 2010 season when he did it, he went 1-5. Fitzpatrick did it. 47 and 63. Grossman did it. He ain't never, he never started again. It was a wrap for him. Peyton, um, Eli Manning did it. 39 and 60. Joe Flacco did it. 36 and 43. Matthew Stafford did it. 50 and 53. Brock Osweiler did it. 2 and 7. Man, y'all better get out of my face. These dudes, once they hit that point, once you hit that low point in your fifth year or later, when you're supposed to already know, uh uh-uh. The history shows those cats don't recover. You weren't here, Bucky, when we talked about this. That going back to your ex is a failure sport. Have you ever done that, Buck? You went back, you know, you you checked your phone. Back in your days, I don't know what that was, Rolodex. You went back and said, man, I wonder what Maisha up to now. It's been 11 years since you seen Maisha, but you're going to call Maisha up like it's just been yesterday. And then you talking on the phone, Maisha, and you're like, she ain't sound like that before, but that's all good because it's still Maisha. That's how Frank <laughs> White feel right now. He like, he, the first press conference talking to Carson Wentz, he like, I don't sound like Carson Wentz, but that's okay because it's Carson Wentz. He going to find out when he keep going out with Carson Wentz on practice fields, game fields, that maybe some things has changed. Maisha ain't the same. Hey, bro, where do you even get a Maisha from with Bucky Brook? Like, oh, You've you been on Facebook. You've been on MySpace too long. I've been on Edge Martin Slauson too long. Tatiana, you want to keep going? Look, that's the only thing I'm going to say to give these Colts fans some hope. The, fr- the framework of the Indianapolis Colts right now is very similar to the framework of the Eagles when the Eagles won the Super Bowl. Eagles didn't have a star receiver the year they won a Super Bowl. They had Alshon. They had Nelson Aguilar. They had Zach Ertz. They had Torrey Smith. They didn't have a guy. An individual became the guy on a week-in and a week-out basis. Right now, the Colts don't have a guy. Now, the Colts still need to try to acquire a receiver in the draft and acquire a left tackle. But given that, the framework is similar. Colts have all pro, Pro Bowl offensive linemen, Quentin Nelson, Ryan Kelly. When the Eagles won the Super Bowl, they had Pro Bowl, all pro type of offensive linemen. Lane Johnson, you had uh, Jason Kelsey uh, because uh, Jason Peters got hurt at the left tackle. The Eagles had a good defense. The Colts have a solid defense. The framework is very similar, and let's not forget the biggest piece. Frank Wright is there. Colts fans, get excited because y'all legit contenders in the AFC. Coming up, we'll talk about a team that's not a legitimate contender. Who? That's the New England. Oh, team. man, get out of here. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> so the Patriots still be looking for a starting quarterback Why? even though they got Cam Newton. We're going to answer that. That's uh, next. You act like he Carson Wentz. <laughs> <laughs> Cam Newton is running it back with the Patriots on a one-year deal. But there is no guarantee he's going to be the starter. A report says New England has not closed themselves off to other options at quarterback, including adding one in the draft or potentially trying to trade for Deshaun Watson or Russell Wilson. So I choke, Mocha, should the Patriots still be on the market for a starting quarterback? They absolutely should, and it's not because I think Cam Newton is or isn't enough necessarily. It's because the Patriots have already told us Cam Newton's not enough. Cam Newton can make up to $14 million this year. Let's talk about who else is in that price range. Andy Dalton, he signed with the Bears. He can make up to 12. Bears still looking for a quarterback. They talking about getting Russell Wilson. Um, Tyrod Taylor, he just signed with the Houston Texans to make up to $13 million. 
Texans still looking for a quarterback. Actually, Texans are trying to keep their current quarterback, Deshaun Watson. Washington signed Ryan Fitzpatrick. Can make up to $12 million. And we know they're still looking for a quarterback. So all of these teams that are paying their quarterbacks similar money are either still looking for a quarterback or trying to retain a quarterback to keep over the quarterback making that salary figure. Cam Newton ain't the quarterback's exclusive guy right now, and they know that by money. Money talks louder than any word you mm. can ever say specifically mm. Mm. in the National Football League. Now, that's my first major note. The second one is this, though, and I was thinking about this based on something you said two days ago. As a quarterback, you either have to elevate the talent around you. Yes. We've seen Aaron Rodgers do that. We've seen Tom Brady do that. Make Chris Hogan a dude. Make <laughs> Wes Welker a dude. Make Julian Edelman potentially a Hall of Famer, dependent on who you ask. We've seen Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson do that at times. Tyler Lockett was supposed to be a glorified special teams player. Russell Wilson, all of a sudden, Tyler Lockett, 15 catches, 200 yards in a game. Nice. But Cam Newton isn't elevating his receivers. So, conversely... Ooh. Can the receivers elevate the quarterbacks? Oh. We saw Stephon Diggs do that. Josh Allen came out of nowhere ah. with Stephon Diggs. Now, all of a sudden, he's a dude. A.J. Green, we saw him do that in uh, Cincinnati for years with Andy Dalton. But the Patriots don't have any receivers to elevate Cam Newton. So if you don't have the receivers to elevate your quarterback, then you better find a quarterback who can elevate the receivers. And we know Cam Newton can't elevate that squad. Patriots got to keep looking. Damn, that argument was flawless. <laughs> That movie oh, I do know. That oh, movie I do. Hey, man. I mean, flawless. Indefensible. So there's only one thing I can do. Offense! Time to attack back. I ain't playing no more defense over here because you, you ran up the score with that one. I can't say anything to that because, damn, you're right. We know the love language of sports. <laughs> How much I'm getting paid. With that said, I have to remind you, maybe, Acho, of who Cam Newton is. Please remind me. I forgot. You forgot. I forgot. Um, Cam Newton... We go back to high school. Let's go here. I went to two high schools, Westchester and St. Monica. Let's do it. Sitting there in the lunch line, first day of school, you know, you're in line for that bean burrito with those french fries, you know, the little cheese toast, coffee cake, whatever your selection is, right? I'm sitting there. It's the first day of school. Everybody got on the same thing. Silk shirt, cross courts, Cortez's. I ain't banging, though. Okay, so we sitting there. We chilling. And the first day of school is nothing but judgment day because they looking at your fit and it's like, I'm hanging with him. Nah, I ain't hanging with him. And if you're an athlete, you're exempt to all this because people already know you've been there for a camp, et cetera, in the summer. Cam Newton, first day of school, people are like, yeah, look at him. Uh-huh. All right. First game or so, second game, two and one, looking like, oh, we're going to beat Seattle. Damn, that close. All right, we hung with Cam Newton. And then people like you, who I hated at school, that's why I switched high schools, because they were fake. They were fraudulent. They people like you, they judgmental. They change up. Cam Newton went through puberty right there, middle of school year. All of a sudden, start looking a little bumpy, ugly. <laughs> Caught that COVID. No, you're like, where Cam at? Cam come back. You're like, oh, look at Cam. But do you remember from your high school days, looking back, how some of those people you thought weren't fresh, weren't fine? Oh, did they blossom? I'm going to tell you like this. Cam Newton, first eight weeks, I hear you. But from week eight on, let's look at Cam Newton, how fine he got. Oh, Cam Newton had 14 total touchdowns. Oh, Cam Newton only had three interceptions. Cam Newton got fine. Better completion percentage than Tom Brady last season. Oh, Cam Newton looking kind of cute. What's your name again, Cam? Had a better completion percentage and higher pa passer rating on downfield throws than who? Russell Wilson, who you said elevates the receivers around him. So when I look at it, it's as simple as this. Cam Newton was fresh to death, but he didn't know his assignments in class. He didn't know this system. So he looked good in them Jordans a couple of days. And then all of a sudden you realize, man, when he caught that, he didn't know everything. But he hit the ground running, paused, went back, and he started to fix his own issues. Focus on that momentum from the end of the season to this offseason. With continuity going back, Cam Newton's going to be something special. In my problem with you, though, Cell, is that from week eight on, no, Cam Newton didn't do things at the same atrocious rate, <laughs> but he didn't necessarily do things great. 14 total touchdowns? I'll give it to you like this. Nine yeah. games were played from week eight on, obviously, and he had five of those games with no passing touchdowns. Three of those games with one passing touchdown. So eight that? of oh. the nine games, Cam Newton had one passing yeah, touchdown so 
or less. So eight out of nine times, this dude had one passing touchdown or less. I think that's 88.9% or like 0.889%. That's more than so, nine. That's more than nine. That's terrible. <laughs> like, <laughs> how, can you how can you find solace in saying, you know what, yeah. I'm just going to let Cam Newton come back exclusively as our starter when in his best days he was throwing for no to one passing touchdown. He a quarterback. He's not a running back, not a glorified wildcat running back, none of that. If I want a guy to come in and just run the ball in the end zone, then, yeah, I can bring Cam Newton in in certain packages like Taysom Hill. But I need him to be able to pass the ball and run the ball at a high clip, and he can't do that. Man, I'm looking at a guy that you keep telling me how much you love, Baker Mayfield, and I saw him go out there and throw for 25% of his entire touchdowns for the last year in one game. One game. Quarter of them. Gone. Five against... What was that? The Cleveland, uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Then I'm looking at him from that game on. Zero, 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 one. That's five games after you already got a quarter of your touchdown total in one game. My point is this. You could cook these books all day. Uh, first off, you cooked them wrong. It wasn't a quarter. Five out of 26 is not a quarter. Five out of 26 is 20%. 20%. Damn it. Columbia, Texas. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's starting to rub off on me the wrong way. All I'm saying is, you can All right. Put it like this. If I walked up to you, I'd say, I got a quarterback right now. Had a higher completion percentage than Tom Brady last year and also had more rushing touchdowns than Michael Vick ever had. You want him? No. Oh, you're a more, damn liar. I need more answers. What? I need more answers. More need... answers? He can run the ball. He can throw the ball. He accurate with the football and he can run the football. That's not enough? No. <laughs> oh, God, I can't deal with you. <laughs> you are really rubbing off on me. That's 20%. Russell Wilson is frustrated, but Pete Carroll's not letting him go. We'll tell you if Russ should trust the Seahawks. That's next on Speak for Yourself. Let's head back to Seattle because Pete Carroll reportedly nixed a deal that would have sent Russell Wilson to the Bears. Mm -hmm. But that does not mean trade talks are over in Seattle. Adam Schefter said, quote, I want to see the draft come and go before I'm ready to say that Russell Wilson will be a Seahawk this year. Mm. So, Sam, yeah. I said this one. Should Russell Wilson... Yeah. I said now, Sam. Yeah. Should Stop. Chill. Don't get fired. Don't get fired. I'm one of them A&Ms out there. Should Russell Wilson yeah. trust the Seahawks? AT &T's. No. Actually, yes. <laughs> you know why you should trust him? Why that? Because they did everything they could for Russell Wilson. They made Russell Wilson Russell Wilson. Think about this. How did Russell Wilson even hit the ground running as an NFL quarterback? One, he went to a situation where they had paid Matt Flynn. You know the NFL. When someone gets paid, you ain't beating them out no matter how you perform. That's true. <laughs> Facts. That's true. Facts? I mean, when I got paid in, like, my third year when I wasn't that good, I was like, damn, he still can't beat me out, even though he better than me because he's my backup, and I got this money tied up. So it's funny how that works in the NFL. But still, this organization – open-minded enough to allow Russell Wilson to beat out a guy that they had just given money to. Now, then all of a sudden, with the Legion of Boom, with a running game and Marshawn Lynch, they go out there, not only win a Super Bowl, but return to that same Super Bowl. And now Russell Wilson's going to sit there and say, because let Russ Cook is failing because he can't finish the season as the same Russell Wilson that starts the season, it's the Seahawks' fault. Fault. You need to trust these dudes. They paid you once. They paid you twice. They gave you defense. They gave you running game. They gave you your name because there are a lot of empty calorie quarterbacks out there. Yeah, I said it. Imagine Russell Wilson without a Super Bowl, without the Super Bowl appearance that was really built off the Legion of Boom and running game. Imagine Russell Wilson, just another guy. Yeah, I had 26 touchdowns and seven interceptions and nothing else to show for it. The same Russell Wilson who's lost six of his last nine playoff appearances. Come on, Russell Wilson. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. And that's the Seattle Seahawks. So Russ can't trust the Seahawks, though, because I don't think he can trust them from a macro perspective or a micro perspective. Let's start macro. I don't think he can trust them from the perspective of Pete Carroll, can you still draft properly? Remember, when you created the Legion of Boom, we talked about this a few days ago, you found Richard, Sh Richard Sherman in the fifth round. Cam Beast. Chancellor was in the fifth round. Beast. You got Earl Thomas after, uh, before drafting your boy who you coached in college, Taylor Mays. Mm. So back then, Pete Carroll, you was drafting. Mm. You were stealing cats. You were drafting. But outside of DK Metcalf, like, you haven't really landed any top flight picks that make us say, yes, I can trust you from a macro level. Who? My, outside Who? of DK. Uh, recently, recently. Tyler Locker? You don't like Tyler Locker? Russell Wilson made that, though. That's my I point. Mean, like, Russell know. Wilson helped He got other receivers Locker. that ain't got over 1,000 yards, but I... Uh, uh, now, I on, on, a, on a micro level, okay. I don't think Russell Wilson can trust Pete Carroll because, remember, 
the Seahawks were trying to trade Pete Carroll for that number one overall pick back when the Browns had it to draft Baker Mayfield. That True. was words that were spreading. True. So in the league, you really can't trust anybody, though. True. If Bill Belichick can't trust Tom Brady or Tom Brady can't trust Bill Belichick because they went out and drafted Jimmy G back in 2014, <laughs> then how in the world can Russell Wilson trust a Pete Carroll when you know Pete Carroll was trying to shop you then. Mm. Pete Carroll, like now, is trying to shop you. That's why you trying to get shopped. Y'all both really just trying to cheat on the other person before you get cheated on. It's mm. just who can pull faster. Like, y'all both, like, be real. Hey, be real. Y'all both in the same situation. Ooh, like, there. man, yeah. Pete Carroll trying to get me. Russ, like, I'm trying to get Pete. It's just who's actually going to succeed. I don't think Russell Wilson can trust the Seahawks, but if we being real, Seahawks can't trust Russell Wilson either. Oh, that's a good one right there. Don't take me back to those days. Oh, I hated being single as much as I was winning. I was, like, I was the dude who was miserable after a win. I was like, man, <laughs> I'll leave the you club. Soaking. I was mad. Man, I, oh, I wasn't a perfect boyfriend, though, by far. I was bad. Like, for real, caught up. Like, oh, God. Somebody liked me, I liked them back. That was just my motto. <laughs> that was my motto. Oh, but then one of my exes actually... Married one of my teammates, and that's, that, that didn't feel good. Anyway, you took me there. Uh, Russell Wilson, you know who he is? Forget trust. He just Philip Rivers that had a Legion of Boom. Ooh, Philip Rivers. Imagine Philip Rivers with a Legion of Boom and a Marshawn Lynch. That's Russell Wilson. Because without that, all of a sudden, you look at Russell Wilson, you start to say, how much can you carry by yourself? For real. Dog, he went in the playoffs and threw for 40%. And then start complaining at the Super Bowl. And then talk about his offensive line. Oh, really? The same offensive line that allows you to have the second most time in the pocket? Second to only Lamar Jackson? Russell Wilson's sitting in the pocket longer than everybody but Lamar Jackson. And we know why Lamar Jackson's still in the pocket, because he's trying to figure out where I'm going to run. <laughs> Russell Wilson complained about this offensive line. They're like, bro, you out here tripping. So I look at the situation. It's not even about trust. In any relationship I've been in, when it's business-oriented, and that's what pro sports is, dog, it's just about can we work together. Like, Acho, be real. How many times have you come over to my house? I'll wait. Nope. How many times you invite me over to your house? I'll wait. Nope. How many times we went to dinner? Drinks. Snack stands. <laughs> you ain't took me nowhere. <laughs> I've taken you nowhere. We understand it's the pandemic. Things going to change, and then we're going to change. But the point is, we come in here and we get it going. I don't know if I can really trust you. You're wearing a lot of gold that doesn't match. I don't know if I can go <laughs> with you. But my point is, man, these dudes are too much in their feelings. Just go to work. But, Sal, the difference is we can trust each other to get the job done. Facts. Right? Like, I don't have to trust you personally. You ain't got to trust me personally. But when the show comes on, we can trust each other to get the job done. I love it. I don't think Russell Wilson can trust Pete Carroll to get the job done from a building a team standpoint. Like, Pete Carroll, why is our leader in sacks our safety? Kudos to Jamal Adams for leading the team in sacks. But, like, <laughs> yeah, why right. is our team leader in sacks a safety? Yeah, that's garbage. Carlos Dunlap, who was actually our most effective pass rusher, y'all let walk out the door. Mm. Y'all made some small moves at tight end and O-line in the offseason, but nothing monumental when... Within the same division, the Niners just signed up Trent Williams, one of the best O-tackles in the game, Ooh, and just acquired a center, Alex Mack, a top-flight uh, center, at least back in his heyday. So I can't trust you even to get the job done. Now, on the flip side, Russell Wilson is saying, hey, y'all can trust me. First five games, we had a historically bad defense. We were still 5-0. and We were winning shootouts against the Falcons. Mm -hmm. We were winning shootouts against the Cowboys. Yeah. So while I can't trust you, Pete, you got to remember, you can still trust me. So that's where it is. Oh, Russell Wilson. oh, and I'm not letting you off right now because um, you, you just trust. Here's trust. Not about what you're saying is what you're doing. Like a lot of people out there can fool you with what they say. True. That's how I was as a boyfriend. I said a lot of good stuff. But you know what? You got to come back with that. Support that with action, boss. Uh, since Russell Wilson was drafted, what team in the NFL has the number one rushing attack? Seahawks. Since Russell Wilson was drafted, what team has the number one scoring defense and number one total defense? Seahawks. The point is, Russell Wilson doesn't count all the times where they scored under 20 points, but still were winning those games. Russell Wilson leads in that category as well. You better thank these Seattle Seahawks, trust or not, get to work. Dak Prescott is signed in Dallas, but we'll tell you if the Cowboys are clearly the best team in the NFC East. That's next. Don't speak for yourself. You trust me, Otto? A little bit. <laughs> Dak Prescott got his long-awaited long-term deal in Dallas. But other than that, the Cowboys have been kind of quiet in free agency crickets. Washington won the NFC East last season and just added Ryan Fitzpatrick from Harvard as their quarterback. That did not impress the Dallas Morning News, who said, quote, mediocrity will get you close. 
to win in the division and thinks that could actually hurt the Cowboys. Interesting. Acho. Are the Cowboys clearly the best team in the NFC East? No, Sal, and I look at it like this. Too many question marks. Where? Dak Prescott coming back from injury, and when he was there, two and three. Not putting that all on him, obviously, but coming back from injury, don't know how he'll fare. Question mark. Ezekiel Elliott, he's been on a downward slide for the last three years. Is he still physically by age in his prime? Yes, but by talent, no. Question mark. Defense that ranked 31st in the league in a, as rush defense. Uh, yes, they have the number one, in my opinion, defensive coordinator in Dan Quinn coming back, but question mark. But now let's go story time. Um, mm. The Cowboys, they might also have too many cooks in the kitchen. Okay. Dan Quinn has now been to a Super Bowl more recently than Mike McCarthy. Dan Quinn, the Cowboys' new defensive coordinator. He was the old Falcons head coach. Mike McCarthy has been to a Super Bowl as well. He is a head coach. You know how it goes when you got too many cooks in the kitchen. It's like, wait a second. I don't know if I really agree with what Mike McCarthy is doing. Wait a second. I don't really know if I like this. I don't really know if I like that. Mm. All those cooks in the kitchen may undermine some of the Cowboys' success. So because of their question marks, because too many cooks in the kitchen, I don't think they're the best team in the NFC East. So who is? Yes. It's got to be Washington. Washington? Washington was the best team in the NFC East with question marks at quarterback. They still have question marks at quarterback. <laughs> okay. So nothing has changed for them. But last year, they were the best team in the NFC East. The Cowboys haven't done anything. Even if Dak Prescott does come back, I remind you all, they were just two and three with Dak Prescott. Even if he does come back, I'm not convinced that they are now somehow significantly better than they were last year with Dak Prescott, which was still a losing team on pace to be four and 12. Mm. Somebody has to conclude um, how, how they're the best team now in the NFC East. Oh, my God. It's the Dallas Cowboys by far. They got the best free agent available, Dak Prescott, number one on everyone's list, higher than Trent Williams was if Dak was available, but he wasn't available. And then you look at this team, how they play with Dak and without Dak, it's obvious. It's 11 points per game increase with Dak Prescott on your roster. Speaking of roster, um, is this the best roster in the division by Correct. far? By far. Yes, by far. So why add uh, to What about defense? What about defense? Offensively, oh, yes. Oh, oh. But if, if offense and defense are equal, wouldn't you say Washington and Dallas have? I like Washington's defense, obviously. Yeah. But, boy, um, I don't see Dak, Ezekiel, Elliott, Cooper, Gallup. Uh, it's a lot of dudes, man. So, C.D. Lamb, like all those defenders over there? No, I see you, Chase Young. I see others. But, nah, I still go with the Dallas Cowboys roster in totality. Now... Let's talk about the competition, because that's what I'm grading them against. Like, I'm grading them against a 7-9 winning team winning the division. Uh, the Eagles, mm, they don't even know if they're sure about their quarterback and Jalen Hurts, even though I believe in J Jalen Hurts. And the Giants, the G-men, the garbage men, man, stop. They don't have what it takes. Let's talk about Washington, who got Ryan Fitzpatrick from Harvard. Even though I love him, I still got to take shots at him because it's Columbia versus Harvard. You know, Ryan Fitzpatrick has been on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is ninth team, right? And uh, the teams before there, and I see a losing record in Buffalo, losing record in Cincinnati, Miami, Jets, St. Louis, Tampa. Oh, there you go, Houston. He didn't have a losing record in Houston. You know what he was? Six and six. <laughs> Your favorite, treading water. And then Tennessee. Oh, good Lord. Oh, man. Let's leave this alone. Let me stop doing Let me stop doing that with Ryan Fitzpatrick. Here's the problem. Washington, third worst total offense in the NFL last year. Third worst. Then you add Ryan Fitzpatrick, that's fixing it? Is that going to make it top 10, top 20? I don't know. Don't see that. Bad offensive line. They allowed 50 sacks last season. Okay, let's leave them alone. I don't think Washington's going to do it unless they do more. G-Men, Daniel Jones, who I like, doesn't seem like can stay healthy or perform to the level that I think he can. Uh, 29th ranked passing attack last year in a passing league. Second worst scoring offense and total offense last year. Don't look good for you, G-Man. Uh, the Eagles, what that new first-time head coach that you had jokes for when he first got there. He don't look like a head coach. Maybe he is, maybe he's not, but he's a first-time head coach. Bad red zone defense, bad rushing defense, et cetera. Too many question marks all through Philadelphia. It's the Dallas Cowboys, most talented team, best quarterback in the division. Yes, it's their division. If you're going about talent by selling tickets, yes, it's the Cowboys. Offense sells tickets. We know that. But defense, I think, proved once again it still wins championships because we saw that in the Super Bowl. Remember, Washington was the best team in the division last year. Washington also played the Super Bowl champions closer than the rest of the teams in the playoffs outside of the Aaron Rodgers-led Packers mm. with a backup by the name of Taylor Heineke. If Washington can make it to the playoffs with Alex Smith only starting six games, if they can contend against the eventual Super Bowl champions with a dude by the name of Taylor Heineke making his first start, I would assume that either with Ryan Fitzpatrick or any other up Grade, they are still better than the Can Cowboys. I say one more thing? Just to shut this down. 
Dak Prescott against these teams in the NFC East, NFC least, 19 and 6. Best record of all the quarterbacks, obviously. But three of those losses came in his rookie year. So you know what he really is? Oh, my God. 16-3. Go, Dak. He's back. Carson Wentz said the Eagles drafted Jalen Hurts did not impact him last season. We'll tell you if we're buying that. Next, speak for yourself. Go get him, Dak. It's easy. Easy money. Carson Wentz had a rough season in Philadelphia last year, and he was replaced for the last four games. Wentz met with the media today for the first time as a Colt and said the Eagles drafting Jalen Hurts had no impact on his play. Y'all take a listen. Mm. Obviously, I would have loved to have been the guy playing the, the year out. I'm, there's no mistake in that, but um, that's not how it unfolded. You know, I got a lot of respect for him, and, uh, you know, it's just the way it unfolded. You know, there's a lot of things that had to fall into place for all these things to, to go down and for me to be here. Mm. So, Marcellus, are you buying Carson Wentz's take there? Nope, not at all. Look, Carson Wentz getting caught up in the sauce right now, thinking, I have a fresh start. That's great, but a fresh start doesn't mean you get to forget your past. And in this situation right here, oh, my God, I was ready to give him credit. Like, yo, I felt the little second round of breathing down my neck, so that had an impact and an effect on me. But now he just made me just have to think, you're just sorry on your own. Like, I don't want to think that. I want to think that there were outside forces caving in on you, Carson Wentz. Sad to hear. Yeah, my dog Carson Wentz, I got to call you out on this one, Carson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he's lying here. I think um, Jalen Hurts will first off from sources within the locker room and just from the play, it had an effect. It had an impact. I don't blame Carson Wentz for that. Somebody breathing down your throat when you should be the guy cemented in the position, it does play a negative effect. It does have ne negative attributes. Don't look at me like that, you said that breathe it out of your throat. I ain't never heard it that way, but it's okay. Not, it's, it's, it's a new era of football, oh, I guess. But the point is, if Brett Favre had his worst season oh, yeah, with Aaron Rodgers getting drafted, what the hell are you, Carson Wentz, up here lying? I hated the fake tough guy. That's it for us. Fox Bet Live next. <laughs>